Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games. Back for more Blackstone Fortress with the Rogue Psychers. Starting with Rosie Skin 09068. So, getting hit by this uh, big old polar vortex. So, pretty good snowstorm going on outside. So, <laughs> yeah. Now, in Warhammer 40,000, psychic powers are drawn from the hellish dimension known as the Warp, and it can have a corrupting influence. And as dangerous as psycher, psychics, i.e. psychers, can be, they are also valuable to the impairing of mankind, if for nothing else, and then uh, psychic powers allow them to navigate through the Warp, as seen with uh, Esper and Locarno. It was also part of the set. But these rogue psychers have been thoroughly influenced by chaos. And, well, they're actually one of the more dangerous models you can run across in Blackstone Fortress. They can uh, become, I think the word is in, either empowered or inspired really dish it out so these things need to be taken out ASAP before they get the chance to do that but uh, the Ministorum Priest Hedius the Purifier's uh, inspiration condition is to kill one of these guys and since there's only two of them I'm just going to do them both on camera but <clears throat> uh, no my train of thought just got derailed I don't remember, but they don't start available when you start a new game of Blackstone Fortress. Only the Spindle Drones, Urgulls, and let's see, Spindle Drones, Urgulls, Negabolt, Cultists, and Traitor Guardsmen begin uh, play as your available hostiles. So they will show up later as you complete explorations. And the same can be said of the Chaos Beastmen I completed previously. So this is one of two models in the kit that had leftover parts. So doing something all fun with those. Probably won't do a video for it, but I'll show it off at some point later, probably on Instagram. But um, So using a unhealthy looking flesh tone, I'm going to make this look a whole lot worse because the powers they wield are definitely having an adverse effect on their physiology. I think I can go ahead and get the clothes next, so... Templar Blue. 09056. This is a nice denim ish color, which I like to use for more utilitarian looking clothing. In this case, it's actually just going to end up going on their pants since their long sleeved coats are going to be a separate color altogether. Also nerve-wracking to assemble because of the fragility of the chains. They are hovering off the ground, but those chains are holding them down and attaching them to their base. It's still kind of a nerve-wracking experience to have just these thin little connection points. They're not the worst, most fragile models I've got coming up in my painting queue, but. Uh, and they're not the, they're definitely not the most uh, durable either.
Not that you need to put too much pressure on the paint anyway, but I've had it happen before where I where just the light pressure from the brush barely touching it is enough to break a fragile model. I'm going to let that dry for a bit and then move on. So not too bad a start. Moving on. Steel 09206. You know what? Actually, leave this variant black and steel 09205. These weights are keeping them down physically. So, four weights somewhere. But they're not being pulled around by good grief. That is getting bad out there with the wind. But not so much of an imposition that they can't uh, move as they need to. Such is the power they wield. <laughs> Just barely, barely under control. Probably not under as much control as they'd like to think. do the weights themselves. Well, you know what? Never mind, I will. Never mind. Kind of interesting to note that uh, for all their formidable psychic powers, they also are packing last pistols. <laughs> At least I think their last pistols might be auto pistols now. But just Interesting bit of flavor there. Let's see. They have some armor on their cloak, on their um, jackets. I don't want to do that. We'll do it in the same color as the weights, since they will be. That is too much paint. Since I intend to do the jackets in a fairly bright color. This is, um, just gonna end getting super long, so I'll just go back to switching back and forth between the models here. We're at Stormy Gray 09088. Still got that weird delay. I don't need much of this, this is just going on the last pistols, which are holstered. And these models. They have identical parts to each other. Well, hopefully you can hear me above all that wind. They have identical parts for the most part. Mostly on the lower half, but there is uh, are a few differences. Mostly on the head. So... Okay. 09197 old bronze. Uh, yeah. And for this, I'm going to get that decoration, the belt buckle very carefully, and there. Staff. The eight pointed star of chaos, and this is fairly fragile, so it does make me nervous, but should be okay. 
okay if I just take very delicate touch but you see with my being delicate it's moving a little bit so it's it's going to be nerve-wracking one way or another so I think that tentacle is actually part of his flesh oh looking at it hmm Trying to figure if he has armor on or not. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't acknowledge this as it being a part of his body before, so I'm gonna have to go back and take care of that with the uh, flesh tone I used. The uh, what is it? Rosy skin. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to do some reevaluating on uh, parts. And you know what? I think this is supposed to be a breastplate, so we'll take that steel and do that. Which makes sense to a certain extent that they'd have armor on. But. Which also means that. Uh, that's gonna be a separate, okay. I think I got that figured out, all right. Get the other one fixed up and back in a minute. Oh boy, the blu is coming back. Okay, Violet Red 09026. This is going on the coats. I've had a few uh, brownouts with my power supply here, so these are fairly uncommon where I live, but um, I don't know what's going to happen, if the power's going to get knocked out or not, we'll just see what happens when it happens, but uh, it's possible this video gets kind of messed up or I lose some of what I've done today, we'll see. Not something I wanted to happen. Now I noticed there's a weight on the coat. I took care of that off camera because I didn't realize I had, it was there at first. So. Well, now, the reason for wanting a bright, this particular color is, this is, I see these guys as being just very arrogant, despite being more or less slaves to the Luna's powers of chaos and even to Obsidian's Malix himself. I see these guys as being very arrogant, seeing themselves as endlessly superior to, well, pretty much everyone else around them. Even if they have to bow to Malix, they'll bow to no one else. So to a certain extent, their color scheme is a mockery of what Janice Drake, the rogue traitor, wears.
terms of using these models in Warhammer 40,000 games, a lot of the explorers are difficult to work in, especially on the Imperium side. But, though to be fair, I don't know all the keywords for all the factions anyway, but <clears throat> most of these Chaos guys are Black Legionnaires and have the Servants of the Abyss keyword and can be included with Obsidious Malax. And I just painted over that bronze up like. Fortunately, the bronze is still wet, so I can just patch it up or try to really quick. This looks funny. It should still be okay. Oh, I wasn't paying enough attention. Okay, that's kind of patched up. So it can be really easy to work these hostiles into, or at least most of them, into a specialist in a red detachment with Obsidious Malix and a Chaos Space Marines army. Okay. Get the other one and then move on a bit. Okay. Oiled leather zero nine one one zero. Hmm. Yeah. I have to look at how the details on these models are layered to determine the best way of doing the uh, the best way of painting it. But bring that little breather. I took a look at Warhammer's community site and they've previewed a new type of chaos lord. I think it was Lord Discordant. That is awesome. So the much needed overhaul chaos is getting is really looking nice so far. This color is just going on the gun belts here. I see a gap I'm going to touch up on his coat. So I managed to miss. Go ahead and take care of the other one's holster. His coat is less dry, but it's okay. Being careful on that skull ornament I did earlier. Now for the last base coat, moldy skin zero nine one four nine. <clears throat> for this uh, sort of pelt coming off of him. really picking up. I was hoping yesterday, I was hoping I'd be able to take a walk today, but uh, I'm not one to take walks in the middle of raging snowstorms. I don't think this quite qualifies as a blizzard yet, but some people are saying that. We'll see what happens when it happens. Shooting once everything's dried up. Okay, my camera's fighting me a bit on focus, but uh, Ghoul Skin 09148. Now I'll also be using this for the uh, flesh. If you know, I think I'm probably. Hmm. 
was going to be on the pelt and I think the flesh, but um, let's hold off on the flesh for now. If I can get this bone to close up again. The storm out there is getting a lot worse, but I'm not worried about it because I still have plenty of food. I don't have to go anywhere. And if I really do need to get food, well, my nearest grocery store is only a couple of blocks away, so. So I got the towel on hand. All right, I'm just gonna have to let that dry and do these one at a time. So hit the other guys out and come back in a minute. Okay. I'm gonna do a variant with scorched metal 09125. That pelt isn't completely dry, but it's dry enough to work with. to the other mod. Oh, wait, wait. I almost forgot this trim again. I don't want to do that twice. Now we'll play the other mod and move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ruddy Leather 09109. and the belt. Now, I don't know if the weather outside is technically a blizzard, but it would sure convince people who have never seen one before. Okay. Got the other one in. Move on as soon as I can. Okay, Burgundy Wine 09025. Big problem with me and weather like this outside the snow is it just makes me want to fall asleep and take a nap. <laughs> Kind of counterproductive to everything. Well, kind of counterproductive though. So. That's me somehow conking my camera with my brush. I'm not sure how. It's not. It's not a big deal. It's fine. That is really howling out there.
apply to the other one and move on in a minute. Alright, Pure Black 09037. This is only going on the last pistol grip hanging out. Yes. Unspeakable, unspeakably terrible psychic powers, and they still feel the need to carry a gun. <laughs> now, this one is going to need extra water to thin it out, because it's way too easy to go too far with when you're using pure black to shade. But, the way that storm's going, might end up spending tomorrow lining my deck with a little snowman just to screw with the neighbors. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> that done. Adamantium Black 09124. <sighs> and this is going to be the shade for the metal, or the steel, rather. Doing a little experimenting with uh, this to make way for the Space Marines and Obsidious Mouths, of course. Get the other one, <clears throat> excuse me, get the other one that'll just leave the flesh tone to shade. Alright, that's going pretty good so far. Alright, second to last, Brion Blue 09055. I just need to get the flesh tone once that dries and we'll get the highlights done. Okay. Last shade is Ghoul Skin 09148. And we'll be using this to give these rogues a ghastly pallor, even above and beyond what they've got. Put that out and thin this out just a bit more. Looks a bit thick.
Okay, that's pretty good. Let that dry completely, and then I can get the eyes and start highlighting. Yay. Okay. I've lost my brush, it seems. Oh, here it is. Pure white, 09039. Pupils and mouth. There is a plan here. All right. Allow that to dry. We got a little more lighting effect here. Okay. Zero nine one zero two coppery orange for that nice chaos feel. Not sure exactly how that color got associated with chaos, but whatever. Yeah, these guys are actively Using their powers, light spilling out of their eyes and mouth. As they prepare to rip reality a new one. Once well, that's dry, all right. Oh boy, that does not show up well. All right, rosy highlight zero nine zero six nine. Lighting effect did not turn out exactly as I would have hoped, but uh, I'm experimenting here anyway, so. Rubbing most of the paint out on a paper towel before lightly dusting. Concerning myself with the most readily visible surfaces. Okay, apply to the other one and move on. Ash and blue 09057. Yep, it's still coming down out there. Can't tell if it's still actively stung, snowing or if the wind's just pushing around, but hmm. Again, focusing on the most readily visible surface. Apply to the other one, move on. 09027, pale violet red. I just realized I missed his tentacle. Get a little highlight. Well, that was my mistake. So, pale violet red. You well, know, to be fair, I didn't even notice the tentacle until after I started, but it's still annoying when I do that. I don't catch it till I've started filming.
And I've just noticed the aesthetic on these guys would almost be appropriate with the Gene Stealer cult too. <clears throat> okay. Next guy, next color. Zero nine one two six gun metal blue. This has been giving me some problems as of late. Hopefully it lasts for this uh the rage of this video. Excuse me. This is one of the experiments I'm doing is coming into play. Okay, I don't know if that worked the way I wanted, but next guy, next color. Alright, cloudy gray 09089. Get both of these real quick. This is just going on the pistols. Zero nine one one one. This is picking up enough. I can probably just go ahead and finish all the highlights right here. Again, zero nine one zero two. You see that wiggling that is when I get nervous about these. Yeah, you see that wiggling as I dry brush up here. That's very nerve wracking. I'm just barely touching this with the bristles and it's doing that. So, yeah, not happy. Okay. And Bloodless Skin 09150.
is trying to run away from me. Again, a flat brush, pure black 09037. And once this dries, I can do the basic material. Okay, time to base. So I've already got some of the usual glue solution of white glue and water mixed up with my brush. No, that's not very good. Great. I think I killed my brush. Alright, well, let's try this again. Just white glue and water. Being generous on the water. Mix it all up. around the feet of the model, or in this case, the weights. The brush you're using for this is going to get gunked up sooner than it normally would, so, you know, use the worst one you've got that still has somewhat of a point to it. Or just a really cheap one that's... Not bad either while you're building up some rat eight feathers brushes for your dry brushing. Dip into the basic material and I'm using rock debris, also known as talus. I use a mix of coarse, medium, and fine. I find mixes of materials work better than the single material available on the market, so. I tend to mix various grains. All right, apply the other one, give that a minute to set, and then I can seal it and finish up. Okay, last step, taking a sprayer brush on adhesive, I use Scenic Cement by Woodland Scenics. That's not a uh, paid thing, that's just a brand recommendation. Here's other stuff I'm sure it'll do just as nice. So carefully dripping off with an eyedropper. eyedropper glass because this will bond a plastic lickety split. Yeah, you know the snow is bad when you step on a drift and you don't sink into it. Okay. Always clean out your tools to make them last. And in all their diabolic glory, the rogue psychers from Blackstone Fortress. Next up are the uh, Chaos Space Marines with the set. So until then, I'm Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, signing out.